Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 18 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. In part 17, we were discussing isomerism in alkenes and I told you that alkenes show two types of isomers. The first is structural isomerism and the second type of isomerism that it shows is geometrical isomerism. I also told you that isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. If the structure is different due to a difference in the bonding, then it forms structural isomers. But if the bonding is also the same and the structures are different due to the difference in the orientation of the molecule or of the atoms or groups that are attached in the atoms, we get geometrical isomerism. In this video, we are going to study about geometrical isomerism in the case of alkenes. Now let us take this example. Let us imagine that there is an alkene where these two carbon atoms have a double bond between them. And they have, the two carbons are attached to two different groups. And these two groups are the same on both the sides. That is, the carbon, this carbon is attached to a group called X and a group called Y. It could be a group, it could be an atom. Similarly, this carbon is also attached to a group X and a group Y. So X and X are similar and Y and Y are similar. So what, there are two possible arrangements uh, in this case. The bonding is the same, but there are two possible arrangements. Do you see here also the structure, the second structure or the other isomer, that the structure of the other isomer that I have made also has the same bonding. There are two carbons bound by a second, uh, by a double bond. And both the carbons are attached to two groups, X and Y, and this is also attached to X and Y. So what is the difference between these two? If you look at this isomer, in this isomer, if you imagine that this is the double bond, and this is X and this is Y. If in this isomer, the X's fall on the same side, do you see X and X are falling on this side, of the double bond. If I have it like this, X and X are falling here and Y and Y are falling on the other side. If you uh, imagine this to be an axis, the double bond to be something that is cutting the molecule uh, in halves. And look at this one here, X is on one side and the other, the X of the other carbon is not on the same side, it is on the other side of the wall. If you imagine this to be a wall, then X and X are on one side in this isomer, but in the other isomer, X and Y are on one side and the X of this side is here and the Y of this side is, uh, of this carbon is here. So they are kind of diagonal to each other, right? They are um, across the bridge. If you imagine this to be a bridge, a river and a bridge, you imagine that the X is, one X is on this side of the bridge and the other X is on the other side of the bridge. One Y is on this side of the bridge and the other Y with the other carbon is on the other side of the bridge. <coughs> These two isomers have been given names. This is a cis isomer. It is the uh, term, the prefix used here is cis. Cis means that similar groups fall on the same side. And the second type is a trans isomer. Trans is where it has transferred. One of the similar groups has transferred to the other side of the river. So it is a trans isomer. So such isomers are known as, they are geometrical isomers. Why are they geometrical isomers? Because only the geometry is different. The bonding is not different. The two molecules have the same bonding. Carbon forming two bonds with X and Y, carbon, carbon forming a double bond, same carbon, carbon forming a double bond, Car this carbon also forming two bonds with X and Y. You have the same uh, details here also. The bonding is the same, only the directions are different. <clears throat> Therefore, their geometries appear to be different and hence they are known as geometrical. This is known as geometrical isomerism and it is known as stereo isomerism. Again, stereo is where only the orientation in space is different. The bonding also is the same, but the orientation of the atoms or groups in space is different. Why 
do uh, alkenes show this kind of a cis trans isomerism or geometrical isomerism or stereoisomerism? What could be the reason behind it? Do you remember when we did alkanes? I told you that alkanes can have conformations. The conformers are formed because the two carbon atoms around which rotation occurs, they have a single bond. So if you move one of these, it can rotate. The whole bond will move and it can rotate along any angle. But then I also showed you how uh, instead of cis and trans, what do we call it there? We call it the eclipsed and the staggered conformations. The eclipsed conformation was where they were uh, the uh, the bonds on the front were falling exactly in uh, were parallel to the bonds in the back actually it's not parallel it is in another direction but they fall behind there and in the trans every bond in the back falls in the middle of the two bonds in the front so they were two extreme conformations but these conformations they could be innumerable number that is infinite number of conformations around the two carbon carbons because there is a single bond and a single bond allows complete rotation. In alkenes, on the other hand, you do not see those kind of conformations. What we see is these cis-trans isomerism. Why? Because the carbon-carbon double bond does not allow free rotation. It has a restricted motion. Imagine now I'm holding these two atoms and I'm uh, uh, two bonds. The two hands are the two carbon atoms holding the two bonds. If I try to twist one hand, keeping the other one where it is, and I try to twist this, can I move, can I turn the hand much? Not much. Do you see? I can only move it slightly. I can only move the bond slightly. I cannot, I cannot completely twist it. If I apply too much force, I might be able to move it a little. So it has restricted motion. Due to this restricted motion, it is not possible to completely rotate the bond. If it was possible to completely rotate the bond, we would not have got isomers. Why? Because if, let us say, we had this and the, there was complete rotation possible around the carbon-carbon double bond, then all I had to do was turn this carbon to the side because it can turn. So therefore, it would also have formed those kind of con the uh, conformers or it would not have formed a proper, like proper uh, geometrical isomerism. It would not have shown the cis trans kind of isomerism. So restricted motion around the double bond is responsible for the existence of cis trans isomers. The cis trans isomers have the same structure but do you see, they have the same bondings. Everything is the same. But the configuration, that is the arrangement of atoms in space is different. And that is why they are different isomers. Just because the arrangement in space is different, even if the bonding is the same, they have different properties. So they have different melting points. They have different boiling points. The two conformers, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the two, not the confirmers, the two uh, isomers, they have different melting points, different boiling points and different dipole moments. They have different solubilities. All these properties, basically physical properties, depend on the structure, the difference in their structure. Now let us study the cis-trans isomers in the case of but-2-ene. Okay, but-2-ene means the ene is between the second and the third carbon and it is butene. So butene means it is CH3, CH, double bond CH, CH3. So how would you know that the confirmers are, uh, sorry, the uh, cis-trans isomers are formed? In order to make the cis-trans isomers, what is attached to the two carbons? You have to see the two, two bonds on around the two carbons and what are the groups that are there. So you have CH3 group and you have hydrogen. Every carbon has one bond, one double bond with, with the other carbon and one bond with the carbon of the methyl group and one bond with hydrogen. If both the hydrogens fall on the same side of the river, if this is a river and on this side of the bridge, then which isomer would this be? It would be cis because both the methyl groups are on one side and both the hydrogens are on the other side. And here, excuse me, I'm sorry for that. So now in the trans isomer, 
what do we see that the methyl groups are on the two sides of the river one methyl group is on this side and the other methyl group which is attached to the other carbon is on the other side similarly hydrogen of this carbon is on this side then hydrogen of that the other carbon would be on the other side of the double bond so this is the trans isomer and this is the cis isomer what is the difference that we see in them the boiling point of the cis isomer is 277 kelvin while the boiling point of the trans isomer is 274 Kelvin. It means it boils faster. It, the boiling uh, of the trans isomer is easier. Why? Because this seems to be a more condensed fo uh, formula. You know, if you really see the two methyl groups, the two bulky groups are there. If the two bulky groups are on the same side and this is carbon and hydrogen, it is kind of a little, the weight is falling on one side. This is a more balanced structure. Anyway, we'll study uh, more about these properties as we go ahead. Now, cis but to in and trans but to in, these two. This cis but to in is more polar in nature. More polar means it has a higher dipole moment. How do you explain that? Why does the dipole moment depend on the orientation of the groups around the uh, carbon atoms? If you look here, this is the cis isomer. The methyl group is electron donating. It pushes electrons away from itself. So the charge or the dipole moment moves towards the carbon. Right? Since the dipole moment is towards, that is, the electrons are being pushed towards carbon. So the dipole moment is in this direction. The methyl group here also has dipole moment in this direction. So when you have two things pushing in the same direction, there will be, both the dipole moments will add up. And the total dipole moment is 0.33 dpi. In the case of trans isomer, one methyl group is in this direction, it is putting it is pushing the electrons is in the, that direction. The other methyl group is on the other side of the river and it is pushing in this direction. So this cancels out the other one. Since they both cancel out the force, you know, if you have, there are two things that are pushing towards the same side, or, or let me imagine one person is standing here. One person pushes from here with the same force and the other pushes from there with the same force. What will happen to me? If one of you is pushing me from here and one is pushing me from here with the same force, I'll keep standing where I am. But if both of you come behind me and you push me from behind, I'll fall on my face. That is what happens. There is a dipole moment when both the groups are pushing in one direction. So this has a dipole moment of 0.33 dpi, while the trans isomer does not have, it has a net zero dipole moment. Why? Because both the dipole moments are pushing in opposite directions. Now, the zero dipole is not exactly zero dipole. It is a very mild dipole moment it would have. Why? Because I was one here. I was just standing here and one was pushing me from here and the other was pushing me from there. But in this case, you see there are two different carbons. One is pushing from here. The other is not pushing from the opposite, exactly opposite. Then there's a carbon and the other one is pushing from there. So uh, it's not exactly zero, but on the whole, uh, it is almost zero. So uh, the trans isomer does not have any dipole moment. If you have the solid state, tell me, uh, in solids, the trans isomer would have a higher melting point than uh, cis form. In other words, the solid that is the trans isomer will be a more stable solid than the cis uh, isomer. Why? Because the trans has a more symmetrical structure. It has a more balanced structure. So it's packing in the form of a solid would be better. And whenever, when you have a very bulky group, two bulky groups on top and then the carbon-carbon uh, in the middle, that will not be as stable. But if you have one metal here and one metal here, it is a more symmetrical structure. So the arrangement in the solid state will also be more symmetrical. The more symmetrical it is, the higher, the more stable it will be. Therefore, you will need more heat to separate them. So it will have a higher melting point. 
So we see in solids, it is the trans isomer, which is more stable. And therefore, that solid will be more a more stable solid. So it will have a higher melting point. Now, it is not necessary that you always have identical groups. Sometimes cis trans isomer will also be shown if any one of these groups is identical. So, we said geometrical isomers are also shown by alkenes, which are of the type X, Y, C, where carbon, these, this is the carbon-carbon double bond, the carbon is attached to X and Y, and the other carbon is attached to X and Z. So, Y and Z are different, but X and X are identical. So, how will you know which is the cis and which is trans? If X is both the X's, so you will not bother about the Y and Z, you look at the identical ones. If the two X's are falling on one side, it is cis isomer. If the X's are falling on opposite sides, then it is trans isomer. Actually, if all the four groups which are attached to carbon are different, even they show cis trans isomerism. But here you will have to pair mentally uh, which ones are falling together and which ones are falling in the opposite direction. For example, you have X, Y with C and this C has Z and W. Now you imagine that X and W or, or X and Z, you pair it mentally. That if X and Z are on the same side, then it is cis. It is possible, although the molecule does not know that who is identical, who is not. In another isomer, it is possible that X and Z do not fall on the same side. They fall on the opposite side, even if they are not the same. Even if they are not the same uh, group or the same uh, like uh, atom, still if they are falling on opposite sides in the other uh, isomer, that is also cis-trans isomerism. But here you will have to mentally imagine which ones are falling on one side and which ones are falling on the other side. So. These also show cis-trans isomerism, but for the sake of learning, it becomes easier for us to take an example like this to exam to just explain what cis-trans isomerism is. It does not mean that if all species, four species are different, that molecule will not show cis-trans isomerism. It will show cis-trans isomerism. Other than this, if you are given a question in which you are asked, would this molecule show cis-trans isomerism? If one of the carbons has both X's, both of them are X. In that case, if any one carbon has two groups attached to it, which are the same, such a molecule will not show cis-trans isomerism. Why will it not show cis-trans isomerism? Very easy to guess. If this is also X and this is also X and the other is X and Z. If I say this is cis and on the other side, I say that this is trans, but this is also X. So how is it trans? It is cis again. So if the two groups attached to the same carbon are the same, then that molecule will not show cis trans isomers. So this was the explanation about cis trans isomerism. In the next video, I'm going to solve a few uh, problems based on this, the on geometrical isomerisms. And then we will proceed to the next topic that will be preparation of alkenes. So uh, with this, I'll wind up today's video. If you want to watch the other uh, videos on this uh, in this chapter, please click the link above. Uh, that will appear on your screen. And uh, well, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.